Right, so we are back out yet again with the Matrix cameras after what's been a very long winter, things are finally feel like they're, they're livening up a little bit and it seems that although we're not allowed to fish batches yet, there are a few fish finally starting to feed and we're able to catch some fish. But what we'll come out to do today is something a little bit different. You know what I mean? What the, the lockdown-y pleasure fishing era that we're in at the moment has given us is the opportunity to try different methods that we're probably not scared of using during matches but we won't employ during matches just because you don't catch enough fish you can catch better on other methods and for me the one method that definitely is underused a lot on commercial fisheries and, and everywhere all the type of fishing that I do is fishing a waggler and I don't mean sort of pellet waggly type fishing I mean proper traditional waggler type fishing with maggots and corn and all lovely baits like that just to allow you a proper like Almost an old school style day's fishing where you're going to catch loads and loads of fish in, a, in an active, busy way. And more importantly, it's going to keep you really, really interested and excited during the times when you're not just stuck fishing that pole because that's what you've got to do. I mean, today we're going to come here, we come to Western Pools, which is the perfect sort of example for the types of venue where I want to fish Waggler. In that it's uh, the, the small-ish pools that we often neglect to fish past 13, 14, maybe 16 metres with a pole. We never sort of fish that area. And because of that, the fish are very, very much uh, used to backing off to them sort of areas at this time of year when the water's really, really cleared up. And that is the area we've got to be targeting. And for today, say it's the perfect example, sort of perfect scenario today that we can fish a waggler at that sort of distance and hopefully catch them fish that we wouldn't catch fishing other methods at this time. So before we get to have a, a little play and hopefully catch a few fish, I'd say with this one, without getting too tackle pluggy or anything like that, it is definitely worth running through kit that you need for just, just to make the most out of your day if you're gonna fish a waggler, because it's definitely one of the, the situations where having the right kit, you know, and not specific brands or like that, just the right kit makes it such a, a nicer way of fishing and just makes things work better. So I wanna run through things one by one and just cover things that I think make a little bit of a difference, or in fact, make a big difference in a, just having a nicer day and making sure I can cast more accurately, feed more accurately, see me float better, whatever, it all slowly adds up. First thing is going to be a little bit boring to talk about rods. Yeah, and with wagglers, I think it's really important to have a, a longer, softer rod. I mean, we're fishing for silvers in this case, we're fishing for F1s, I'd, roach skimmers, who knows, bit of everything. So the last thing I need is a really powerful pellet waggly sort of rod. I want something a bit lighter that's going to cushion them fish when I'm striking at them and also allow me to fish much, much lighter which I'm going to need to do to get bites off these fish. So for me, a 13 or a 12 in a few cases if you've got a short chuck, but a 13 foot light waggler rod, it just makes it dead enjoyable. Yeah, for me, a personal opinion, I just like a nice long rod that it just feels nicer to use and cushions everything, allows me to cast lighter floats to the distance, just makes it a pleasure to fish with. So the rod's the first choice. Next thing's the line. Yeah, and this is really, really important when it comes to, for, for all forms of waggler fishing for me, it's the line that dictates your accuracy. Yeah, it shows that the lighter line you can go, or your reel as a main line, um, diameter-wise, it allows you to cast more accurately. The lighter your line is, the, the easier it comes off your reel, and the smaller the float you can cast to the required distance. So in today's case, I've gone really, really light. Yeah, I've gone to 012 Power Micron, which is a pole line, but I'm really, really happy to use it because it's a, a lighter diameter than a normal uh, mono that you'd use on your reel, but it retains the strength so as long as I'm not hooking many carp, I might hook one or two, but as long as the predominantly the amount of fish I'm going to catch a, a small fish, they're not going to pull too hard. By using a line of 012, I've still got the, the breaking strain of, what, three and a half pound, which, I mean, you'd happily use that if you're waggler fishing for carp, but say, it's just got a little bit more finesse to it, but with zero stretch, stretch pretty much because it's a, a pole line. So I've got that loaded on my reel. If I was going to catch carp, then I'd swap up. I'd probably use Horizon Mono in probably four pound, I mean, if I was going to hook a few carp, a proper, I mean, a bit of a stretchy mono that's got a bit more give, if there were more carp getting involved. But for today, there's not. It's all nice silver fish, so I can use a really, really, really light, almost fragile line that allows me to cast a really, really light waggler as far as I need to. Which, on the next subject, that's one I want to touch on. So with me, me main kit covered, I'm going to talk about me, me float and rigs in a little bit when I talk about plumbing up. But the main thing I want to do with me waggler fishing is the area I want to fish. Like I say, this is about catching fish just past your pole line, sort of 16 to maybe 25 metres, depending on the conditions, the bait you're using, how the lake is, all them sort of variables, they all come into it. But that sort of area, like I'm saying, that 
18, 20 meters. That's the, the sexy area that for silvers, that's where I want to be targeting because it's at 18 to 20 meters that I can still feed. I mean, with baits like maggots and casters, that is the absolute limit that I can feed them and keep them fairly accurate. I mean, I'm not going to keep them on a, on a foot square. They're still going to spread a bit, but I can feed my bait that far, which is what dictates everything with new waggler fishing. I mean, the area that I can group my bait, that has to be the area I can fish, because as soon as I start stretching it, just the same as you would with a pellet waggler, the further you push it, the messier it gets, and the less accurate you are, and the, just the less fish you catch, because you're not doing things as well as you could be doing them by bringing it back a little bit. So that's my first thing. Almost before I want to start fishing, ideally, obviously I can't do this in a match, but if I can feed just a couple of maggots with a catapult, see where they land, I mean, once or twice, see where that nice accurate area is, and then plumb up on that spot. That's where I want to be targeting for just for easiness and making everything work as well as it can. So that's my first step. I mean, I know where I'm going to fish. I've chosen my thing. Next up, which is a little bit technical, and that's the plumbing up, which is what I want to run through now to go through the wagglers I'm going to use and why we're going to plumb up with, with certain wagglers to do it in the right way. Right, so quickly, before I go through the actual plumbing up, which is probably the, the most daunting thing with waggler fishing, where people go a little bit wrong and struggle to do it right. But first, before I go through the plumbing up process, I want to talk a little, little bit about setting up of the wagglers and waggler choice. Because I, I do things pretty much in two ways, depending um, how far I'm casting, how windy it is, and what bait I'm using. Sort of dictates how I set my waggler up and which wagglers I use, which is a bit, bit confusing, but let me babble about it <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to put it across in the right, right way. Today I'm fishing for silverfish, uh, roach and eyed, maybe an odd F1. So I want a very, very light waggler and it's very, 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 very unlikely that with the, the lake that I'm fishing, with the conditions the way they are, I'm not going to have to change my waggler today. So I can pretty much get away with having a fixed waggler on the line. I'm not going to have to worry about changing, do you know what I mean, changing anything. The light's not going to change. It's, it's all... I'm in the perfect situation here. I've the tailor-made peg for waggler fishing. So I'm able to fix a loaded waggler onto the line, which I'm a big fan of for silverfish. I like a loaded waggler because you tend to use a nice finer bristle with a loaded waggler. It's just how they come. So I can see a lot more bites. And when it comes to a loaded waggler, it's simply a case of fixing it on the line with some number eight stops. Yeah, that's Andy Mays taught me that from years and years and years ago. Just a little bunch of number eight shots either side, probably three on one side, however many below it. Um, they allow you to move it nice and easily. So stots are a great thing on the line because they're not like shot, they don't damage your line and you can whiz them up and down really, really easy. They're probably the, the safest option after a line stop if you just want to use a straight line stop, but that's for something else in a minute. So with my loaded wagglers, they say I'm really, really happy to, to fix them directly on the line without any um, quick change, whatever, I mean, straight on my line. What I will do, however, is that although I've got, in this case, I've got a 1.5 mil, uh, 1.5 gram, weight loaded into my waggler. I'll often mess about with um, the size of wagglers, do you know what I mean? That's often interchangeable so I can ping it off. And I might put a more buoyant waggler on to, to put a bit more shot down my line, things like that. So there is still some versatility if required, but say most of the time, a nice little 1.5 gram waggler with a 1.5 gram weight in the bottom gives me enough shot to play with. Say in today's case where I've got five foot, I've still got enough shot, enough shot on my rig to play about and do what I need to do, which as a quick run through, it's just a case of five number, 10 spread all down my line. I mean, pretty much I always find that when I am waggler fishing on a commercial, it seems to be the way it's shotted all the time, it's just strung shot down the line. It, there's never any situations that I find in my own fishing where I've got to put any line on the, uh, any shot on the deck or bulk anything up. It's just, it's not the way you're gonna fish because you're loose feeding. It's always about a slow fall, keeping it tight and letting that bait go through the water. So that's how I'm gonna have it done for silverfish. If I was fishing with a carp, I have it a little bit differently in that I have fixed wagglers that I can not, sorry, interchangeable wagglers that will be on a, what are they called, Dad? What are we going to call them? Quick change sleeves, aren't they? Float adapters, that's what they're called, float adapters. I'll have a float adapter onto my line just with two, um, two line stops or one line stop above it, two line stops below it. And I'll fix it in that way with very, very little um, shot down the line because with the different floats that I use when I'm fishing bigger baits or when it's windy, these floats allow me to shot them up with a, a little pack of sort of brass rings that I can shot the entire float's capacity on the float just by interchanging these little rings. 
makes it makes it really easy to change my float without having to to mess about my rig but we're not fishing in that way today so i'm not going to bother with going through that so next up i'm going to go through plumbing up yeah and the first step is what i want to do with plumbing up is at the minute i've got my rig shotted perfectly so this float is shotted down to that so it's got minimal buoyancy in which if i were to try and shot it up it'd be nearly impossible it's never going to pop up i'm never going to see what's going on so what i do to shot up is ping my float off and that's got a 1.5 gram float on at the minute and i'm going to swap that for a great big silly buoyant four gram float that's going to be like a, a lighthouse when it pops up but it gives me that buoyancy that makes plumbing up so 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 much easier and literally i'm going to whiz a number a 10 gram plummet on so i've done this in a few ways my mate andy likes putting a, an ssg on the hook i mean whatever you need to do as long as you, your plummet's little the last thing i want to do is cast a 30 gram plummet yeah it's like casting a, a helicopter it goes all over the place i want a nice small plummet that still leads the way to me peg and doesn't make a mess so with that done we're going to chuck him in to a little tangle and hopefully see what sort of depth we're getting so this has obviously been been pre-plumbed up so i know it's going to go so that'll go under we'll give it plenty of slack and see how that pops up so because the float is so buoyant it comes up nice yeah and i say i've, I've pre-plumbed this up already so i know that if i literally take off a couple of inches now so with these stocks i say they're lovely and lovely and lovely and easy to move i can just whiz a couple of them at a time i'm going to take what i'm going to take five inch off four inch off just to begin with just to hopefully show you now that that float may only just come up or might not come up at all now because i think i was about six inches over depth before that same area i say this time the float don't think he's going to come up i reckon i'm just off so it's really really easy with such a buoyant float it's really easy to gauge what's right and wrong and now i can just sneak it up a couple of inches at a time until i just start seeing that bristle and then i can go from there i know exactly where i am whether i want to be dead depth whether i want to put a bit of line on so this float will let me see exactly what's going on whereas if i plumbed up with a float that wasn't as buoyant i'm just going to put what we're going to put on i'm going to go two and a half inches more and we should just see the bristle now a bit of wind pop up which isn't very good so we can just see that bristle coming up and say it, it's pretty much perfect that i've got a straight rig there it's nice and tight that is dead depth i'm not saying that's the right way of fishing but that is dead depth, so I know exactly how deep my peg is, and I can go from there. If I want to put line on, come off the bottom, whatnot, I've got a nice fixed point, which I'm going to mark on my rod when I whiz it in. And I've got my depth plumbed up nice and accurate, would say. But being able to swap your float to a really buoyant float when you are plumbing up, or if you're struggling with a float that you can't swap, massively undershot in it before you, you do things properly. I mean, massively undershot it to plumb up, and then shot it after that accordingly once you've got a a decent depth it just it helps so much and it's so much quicker getting that right depth instead of struggling with a float that is perfectly shotted i mean it's not the way to go so with that done i can do a bit of fishing but what i am going to do first i'm just going to put a little bit of line on the deck i say that's pretty much dead depth now i'm going to give that another three or four inches so i know i'm putting a bit of line on the deck I say i'm marked on my rod so i know it's how deep it is for future use in case i trash anything but now we are good to go, dead set, and hopefully catch a few fish. So quickly, I'm going to impale a couple of maggots on. So I've got a decent hook on, I've got a size 16 on. Yeah, there's no place with waggler fishing for little tiny hooks on commercials anyway as far as i'm concerned all that fishing with little tiny 18s and 20 hooks is going to do is make you miss spawn bites yeah so having a bigger hook with a little bit of strength because you've got a lot of uh, pressure on your hook when you're striking i mean a lot more than you would with a, a light airy fairy pole rig with light elastic there's a lot more pressure going on that hook so sort of a medium gauge wire so in this case i've got a 16 mxc1 which is a nice sort of it's like a pellet hook that i use on my pole but for me, waggler fishing, absolutely perfect. So, with that feed in, I'm not going to feed again because we've got a bit of a, 
a bit of a breeze kicking off, but I'm going to chuck in, hit me clip, and you'd see it puts my waggler in a lovely straight line. So my feed's just past it, and then I can give it a little flick, sink a little bit of that line. I'm not going to sink too much of it just yet. And my waggler's right on the edge with a nice little flick and probably drawing it back a metre and a half. I'm right back on the edge of where my feed is. So I can let that sink on a lovely tight line with them five, six number tens. It's a lovely, lovely slow fall, but because of the way it's landed, you're sort of in touch with your bait all the time. It's sinking on a, a fairly tight line. So I'm gonna see any bites as soon as they go. Once it hits the bottom, I mean, then things change a little bit, which I wanna to, I want to touch on that in a bit more detail in a minute. So once it's in at the minute, I'm not gonna leave it too long. I'm gonna have that bait. This rig's all about that bait going through the water, then fish seeing it and getting bites on the drop, mostly rather than when it's sat on the deck, especially with maggots that are gonna take such a long time to, to hit the bottom, which we've talked about lots and lots so what i am going to have is quite quick casts and at the minute although i give it a quick flick i've actually left my line predominantly floating i mean it's fairly straight nice and tight little indication then but my line's floating to begin with just because i want to sort of search my peg out and i want to see what me me waggler's actually doing how it's gripping on the bottom whether it's holding whether it's pulling through so i'm not completely sinking it i'm just sort of tightening it with that initial flick to be careful with this bit of rubbish as well. Now that's in, I'm just going to feed 10 maggots. So I'm just at the back of my bait, which is I mean, the ideal place where I want to be to begin with. Let's see if we get any bites on that. So yes, look, that's exactly how we want it on the drop. So there's no need to go mad with the feed, blasting in loads and loads every cast. just about getting some fish competing for that bait to begin with before I, <laughs> before I start committing. So yeah, all the bites are coming really, really fast. That one's big up on my maggots. And because I missed a couple of bites, so this I've got to give Mr May credit for this as well. What I'm going to do next cast is sink my line. And it's amazing the difference completely sinking your line makes to hooking the bite. Hit that yeah, a lot tighter this time. So I've sunk that line a lot more. It's a little bit floating in the middle, but look, that line's a lot more sunk than it was last time. But normally it'll mean I hook a few more bites. So I've not had any bites like that with her having it that quickly. So I'm not gonna feed. What we have done, we've we've picked a lovely swim to begin with when there was no wind whatsoever but while we've been filming all the intro and the, the build up to the actual fishing this horrible breeze has got up right in our face which for waggler in i'd say there's nothing worse the last thing you want is a wind blowing at you when you're trying to loose feed maggots it's so difficult to to group them so what i'm not going to do is when i'm getting these little gusts of wind just don't try you know i mean there's no point feeding when you've got the gust of wind because all that's going to happen is you're going to make a mess so as soon as you get the little lulls that is the time to feed a little bait when you can get away with it. But don't try when you, when the when the conditions aren't going to let you. You're just going to make a mess instead. gone in and what have I had? I've had five or six casts and we'd had a sneaky go before <laughs> before we started doing this and it was quite good but what I've done I've fed while we've been um, while we've been filming the first little bit and it seems that while I've fed I've mucked my peg right up and all the fish have come up so I've had five or six casts now and saying all I'm doing is missing bites I've had five or six casts where I'm getting bites really really quickly really positive bites and I'm missing them all so in this situation what I'm going to do, I've got that fixed marker on my pole, on my rod. I know exactly where I'm, I'm going to be. I'm just going to whiz this. I'm going to take nearly a foot off and come right up off the deck and see if we can find a few. So by using just them couple of stots, it makes it really easy to move it without damaging my line. I say, and be fishing really, really, really quickly. It's going to be nice and patient moving it. One at a time. So I'm going to go in a foot off deck. See if we can find them because there's definitely lots and lots of fish in my peg, but they're not really willing 
to go down on the bottom. So the only thing that seems to be down there are little, little perch or gudgeons. And now that I come shallow, I'm going to leave my line on the surface as well. I'm not going to sink anything because I want to react to it as quickly as possible. I'm also not going to feed this cast. I've still missed it. So I'll give it another chuck and I'll take another foot off if I need to, just to try and find where these fish want to be. There's definitely lots of fish wanting to be off the bottom. You find that a lot this sort of time of year. As soon as you get the little bit of sun, I mean, the fish is so quick in. I mean, wanting to react by come up and warn themselves as fast as possible. So, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Do you find that often they'll sit off bottom? Whether they want to feed or not, they don't want to be on the deck. I'm just going to go in with a, a single maggot instead of a doublet. Sort that out. See, I'm still not feeding anything. I've got a bit of a, a breeze blowing at me, so I'm just hang, hanging fire. So as soon as I put a single maggot on, that's fixed in. It's so crazy. It's not like it's little tiny fish giving you bites that so many people are blaming it on. It's just that I'm at the wrong depth, and especially fish like these, like I, they are a nightmare for um, taking your bait in, spitting it out, but giving you a bite, and you miss all the bites if you're not tight to your hook bait and not at the right depth. So having a rig that allows you to change your depth really easy when you need to, so it can be absolutely vital. And this is a, a lovely one. See, it's proper exciting that, just seeing a bite and a big strike. So much better than sitting there at 13 metres, freezing to death with a pole waiting for a cart to come along, isn't it? I'd rather do this all day long. See, proper, and what was that? What we're gonna say, he was a foot off the bottom, that one, but the bites come on the drop. So that's got me a, a 10 outside that I wouldn't have caught if I'd have just been a, a stubborn bum and stayed on the deck. And with that said, I've got a, a bit of a gap hopefully now that I can feed some bait. There's a ripple, but I can't feel much wind. So before I go in this time, I'm going to feed some bait. So not too many, probably about 10 maggots. See if we'll get where we want to. Uh, just. Sit there at the back of my feed. So another little sneaky tip that I don't know if you heard it ticking over then when I struck, is that whenever I'm fishing a waggler with whatever, whether it's pellet waggler fishing or fishing really light lines for a bit of everything like today, I have my clutch set so as soon as I strike and there's any resistance off a fish, you get that little tick, tick, tick straight away. It just gives the tiniest little bit of line when there's that pressure on the, on the strike and I think that definitely helps to avoid breakages of hook length or anything like that. It's just a little bit more give that seems to help me lose a few less fish. Single maggot on a, a big hook. Let's see what happens. That's like settling lovely. You can see every single individual shot on that bristle registrant. It's quite a fine bristle, there's only a, it's a two mil bristle on that, which for a waggler, it's quite a, a delicate bristle. So I'm still able to show up every single number 10 as it settles. So it's so important because you get that many indications through the water with fish, either just giving you liners or, or whatever else, you just see things happening. So that ticks over straight away. As soon as I strike, there's that tick, tick, tick of it giving a few. And then if I want, I can just tick it. Two more ticks over on me reel and I'm playing my fish properly all of a sudden. This is something different again. This might be an F1 or maybe even a big chubs. We've had a couple of chub already and this is feeling promising. Definitely feeling promising. The same again, off the bottom. It's a foot off bottom and we're catching great big silvers that just don't want to be on the bottom. Oh, this might not be silver, this might be Carp shaped. He's a big, lovely F1. Oh, we missed him. He's a proper, almost a bonus fish today, but who knows? There might be a, a boatload of them sitting off bottom, which is where they're likely to be. I mean, they're not going to want to be on the bottom in such cold water. They definitely just want to be sat there mid water. 
So by having my bait among them in an area where probably where we're going to cast them, why the waggler is so important or so good is that we're fishing an area that pretty much never gets fished in this manner. I mean, people all often throw a feeder there, which is great, but you've seen just by fishing a waggler on the bottom, we're catching nothing. And so instead, because we've got a method that's a bit more versatile and we can swap to, to being off the deck. I'm not going to feed anything this cast with that wind. You, you can sort of, you can change the way you're fishing to suit what the fish are doing, instead of being restricted to throwing a, a maggot feeder or a pellet feeder or whatever else. We can swap about and keep in touch with fish. It's just so much more enjoyable. I'd honestly say as well, in today's, the way this lake is at the minute, we catch far less actually fishing the pole just because there's nothing within pole range. So doing this is putting us among the fish and gives you the, the best, the most enjoyable days fishing you could possibly have. See that's settling lovely. You can see all the bites are coming within five, ten seconds at the very most of that float hitting the, of the um, float fully settling and the bait almost not hitting the deck but reaching the end of its fall. So one other thing I do want to touch on is anchoring your bait and showing it up on your float, but we're going to do that in a minute. Once we've caught a few fishing properly, so yeah, it's, a nice, it's a nice gap where I can feed a bit of bait. That's better than a bit of bait in while the wind's allowed us. Just a little bit off me mark this cast though. Little dilly fish. pitch bait. So we had a little bit of fishing and mega mega enjoyable for how it is today. I mean, we're catching plenty of fish on the drop and everything wants to be shallow today. What I do want to talk about though, in a way that we can't really show up on the camera, so it's something I want to talk about, um, a bit of a technical thing when it comes to waggler fishing just towards the cameras, is that when fishing on deck, things change a lot. I mean, it's great when you're fishing shallow, you're getting bites all the way through the water, you're seeing bites relatively easy on a waggler because you've got a suspended bait. So anything shows up great as long as your droppers do. When fishing on bottom, and you're having to wait for bites, then things can definitely change a little bit. And leading off uh, like the way I fish a pole, you, you've heard me talk a lot about fishing sort of a curve in my rig, which is vital when you're fishing a pole to show up, to make sure your bait's incorporated into your float. I mean, you, any movement of your bait shows up as quickly as possible um, on your rig. And the same thing has to be brought into it, even more so for, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to waggler fishing. I mean, getting your bait, to show up on your bristle is, is everything, and it's so much easier to do on a waggler, as long as you, you know what sort of things you're looking for. So what I'm, what I'm sort of focusing on when I'm doing this is um, when I'm using heavy enough baits to anchor. That, that's probably the main property that you're looking for. It's very difficult to get maggots to anchor on the bottom because they're so light. But whenever you're using heavier baits like pellets, corn, I mean, sometimes maggots if conditions are perfect, but bigger baits that have got a bit of, bit of anchorage to them that stay on the deck. It, it lends it, it's sort of easier to get it to do. You've got like a little plummet on the end. So the, what you're trying to achieve is by casting out, you're letting your rig settle on a tight line. And in an ideal world, it stays tight from the moment it lands on the water when it lands in a straight line to when it sinks on the bottom and then your float literally drags it along. I mean, in a perfect world, that happens. It doesn't always happen all the time though. Often you, you may get an indication on the way down which makes your bait land straight. You might twitch it and make your bait land straight. So you've not always got a tight line. So ensuring that your float is registering to your bait on a waglet, for me, it, it's everything. And all you need to do that by is either by leaving a little bit of um, line on the surface just to act as a little bit of a sail, but that needs to be done within reason. So if you leave too much line on the surface with the wrong bristle, then you're gonna drag it under. But sometimes leaving, like today where it's perfect, it's not too windy, but there's a bit of surface movement, leaving a little bit of line on the surface can just drag that waggler from sort of that when it's a straight rig in the water when your rig's settled to just as it edges you just see it go down just two or three mil or a bit more in that case so you can see what's going on 
but it can just be a couple of millimeter difference on your waggler just showing up and it tells you that that bait is anchored and that curve's taking place because your waggler wants to drift away but your bait's staying where it is and what you have to do to sort of stay in touch with it is use the correct bristle of the correct float for on the day and see if it's really towing you might want to use a straight waggler that really does have a bit of buoyancy to it that you can still see it happening but it's not going to sink underwater. It's not going to drag your float underwater because it's got such heavy anchorage to it that it sinks it because it's got a really light, less buoyant bristle. By beefing it up, by using different floats with, with bigger bristles, so often that's my sort of choice, about a three miller, you've got enough buoyancy to keep it there and it actually helps you stable things up. So you're never fishing dead depth, which would mean that your bait moves really easy. You may be fishing six, you may even be fishing 12 inches over depth in some cases, but as long as you're letting that float move to the point where it, it sort of stiffens up and stays, then you know that's happening and it allows you to see bites so much easier. When you're getting bites sort of slowly on the bottom, when you're waiting for bites and your bait's been on the deck for X amount of time, 30 seconds plus, then by letting your float move about a little bit by how much line you leave on the top, it can definitely lead to just it tightening up and you're seeing so much more what's going on. And it's them little tiny indications that are often then great big fish that are just the weary. They're not just going to nail it and go straight away. They're going to just mess about with your bait at this time of year and keeping things tight just puts a few more fish in my let and lets me see what's going on that little bit better. It is so enjoyable just to catch a few in such a, a nice different way. I mean, it's a lovely versatile way that you're nice and busy, you're not just sitting there waiting back for bites from big silly carp at this time of year. It's a lovely method that you can be so active. And for me, there is nothing more exciting, there's a lovely little hide, nothing more exciting than that waggler going on there. And so with a few little sneaky tweaks, you can make sure you can do it a little bit better and really, really make the most of it. So you miss a few less bites, keep your feet a little bit tighter and ultimately catch a lot more of them fishies. So hopefully that was a nice little technical wagglery one that's been a little bit of enjoyment while we're all stuck at home. Don't forget to like, sub like and subscribe for a little bit more content and some great more videos on the Matrix YouTube channel.